in Kanda, Accra. Let's now start with the major news highlights of the day. The Tema Police Command has arrested nine persons suspected of dealing in illicit drugs at Tulaku, a suburb within the Ashaman municipality. Deputy Regional Commander DCOP Boydu Pepra led his team to make the arrests. And former President John Dramani Mahama is urging the government as a matter of urgency to complete the Bogatanga Boku Road, which his government started prior to the 2016 elections. He was addressing teeming supporters of the NDC in Bogatanga after their unity walk in the Upper East region. Also tonight, rice farmers in Ahafuano Southeast District have appealed for farming machinery to help them ease the difficulties in rice farming. The farmers say using traditional means to farm is discouraging the youth from venturing into agriculture. In sports, Ghana's youngest world champion Isaac the Royal Storm Dogbe was crowned the Sports Personality of the Year at the 43rd Sports Writers Association Swag Awards last night at the Accra International Conference Centre. Atletico Madrid midfielder Thomas Te Party also won the Footballer of the Year Award. On the international front, the American space agency NASA has launched its latest mission to Mars. InSight will be the first probe to focus its investigations predominantly on the interior of the red planet. The lander due to touchdown in November will put seismometers on the surface to feel for Mars quakes. Those were the major news highlights. Remember, you can watch us on your DSTV channel 279 and we're streaming live on the internet at 3news.com as well as on our Facebook page. Up next is the big one. Welcome. Now, the Ghana Legal Aid Scheme has been overwhelmed with cases as lawyers signing up for the free legal service are on a decline. Legal Aid handles more than 6,000 cases each year, but has less than 30 lawyers offering legal aid. A Supreme Court judge, uh, Justice Jones Victor Doce, has asked the Ghana Bar Association, GBA, to make it mandatory for all lawyers to show evidence of pro bono cases before their licenses are renewed. He was speaking at the Akuse local prison in the eastern region during the sittings of the Justice for All program. Let's get on to the lines, uh, telephone lines now and speak with Al Hassan Yahya Saini, who is the Director of Legal Aid Scheme, is joining us on phone. Good evening, sir. Thank you extremely. Now, uh, this suggestion by Justice Duce for the Ghana Bar Association to make it mandatory for all lawyers to show some evidence of pro bono cases before their licenses are renewed. I want you to tell me how important this will be if the Bar Association considers it. Well, it's, it's something that it, it certainly will be a very important thing for the Bar itself given what the past own commitments have been over the years, at least in, in, in their resolutions at the, at, the virus bar, at the virus bar conferences, that the, each person should commit some time in the course of a year to provide pro bono services for the legal aid scheme. If implementation or enforcement, which has been the challenge for the bar over these years, if, if the um, Supreme Court justice is stating it. He's only restating what the bar itself has been saying over the years, but has not really been able to implement. But the licensing, I, I believe he, I, I'm, I haven't listened to him, but if he talks about licensing, I, I'm sure he would have known about the General Legal Council and not the Ghana Bar Association. Mm. Because the General Legal Council that licenses lawyers and regulates law practice in this country. 
All right, so, so let me understand whether the problem is about staff strength of the legal aid scheme or is about the unwillingness of lawyers to take on pro bono cases or what, what exactly is the problem? It is about both, if you ask me, because the staff strength, take Accra, for instance, look at now there are only three lawyers on the legal aid payroll. Accra handles between 3,000 and 2,500 cases in a year. Clearly, you don't expect those three lawyers to be able to handle all those cases. ADR personnel are there to help in a number of the cases. But then, if there are about 1,112 lawyers in Accra, each took a couple of cases, I'm sure it will go a long way to help out with what the legal aid should be able to deliver. So uh, let's talk about staff strength. Uh, your, your, your numbers are low, I reckon. What's responsible for this? Well, uh, there, has to, there has to be, this, this, the state has to have the resources to be able to employ the lawyers. So, so it is a resource problem. And who are supposed to resource you? The state is supposed to do that. It's the state that should be able to employ, to, to, to help enable us to employ the lawyers to be able to deal with the cases that needs to be done. That's not the state matter. So do you get the sense that over the years, uh, under successive governments and uh, the lack of resources you talk about, it shows an indication perhaps that governments are not committing themselves to justice for all in the real terms? That is, a, that is the impression that it, it gives, if you ask, that, that, that is so. Because I believe that if all the people who actually get in conflict with the law had a voice, even at the, very, at, at the, at the inception, right from the police station through to the first time of being arraigned before court, I'm sure a lot of them would not even find themselves remanded to, 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 be, to be calling for a justice for all program eventually. It's because the people invariably do not have a voice when they need a voice most. That causes the remand situation to get as bad as it gets to then require the judges to go from prison to prison to find out who is there and find out what they can do for the person. I, 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 I think that that's basically the, the problem. And I, I know that uh, by your structure, you're supposed to have presence throughout the country. Is this the case? Um, throughout the country, it's, it's a very broad thing. We, we definitely are not throughout the country. The expectation would have been that we would be there in every region and also in every, as many districts as possible. Unfortunately, that is not the case. So if you were to make an appeal to the current administration, uh, what would your appeal focus on, on ensuring that you're resourced enough to get more staff or to put in place perhaps regulations or legislation to, to, to bind lawyers to commit to pro bono? It would require both. Because definitely... There will be situations in which there will be emergencies, and there are also be situations in which the, f the hard to reach areas, people will not have private lawyers going to the hard to reach areas. So the, 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 the scheme definitely will have to employ people who will be able to handle those areas, even if the bar is amenable to helping with the provision of legal aid where the, where the lawyers are. And which is in the urban centers. But 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 uh, let me let me ask you. I know it's uh, it might not be the case, but is it possible this is about shortage of lawyers really, rather than willingness of lawyers to commit to uh, pro bono, especially as there being a series of reforms by the General Legal Council, which uh, perhaps uh, strengthens the requirements or uh, makes the requirement a bit stiffer and. Not many people are getting into vocational training. Well, there, there certainly cannot be too many lawyers in a society because look, there are so many things that lawyers can and ought to be doing 
which policy cannot get done, given everywhere, given the number of lawyers that we have. So definitely, we can have more. We can have a lot more lawyers than we have now. There's no doubt about that. Right. Right. Uh, Mr. Alhassan uh, uh, Yahya Saini, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Alhassan Yahya Saini is the director of the Legal Aid Scheme. I'm Stephen Enti. Uh, this is still News at 10. We're live from the News Hub at Addis Kanda. We have more news for you. Please stay. So me and my boys decided to go watch the World Cup in Russia. Oh, what a cold, great disaster. Staying home would have been better. Every time we asked for directions, so they were shouting at us. <laughs> well, uh, they eat bread. Bread for breakfast, bread for lunch, bread for supper, and dessert. They even have the audacity to bath in ice freezing cold water. The street is full of snow. Wow. It gets up to your knees. They tried to make me have this beetroot and cabbage soup. It was so pink. Looking for a soccer stadium, Swiss Nikki. Swiss Nikki. Nothing. Swiss Nikki. Nothing. I am so happy to be back in the African sunshine. <laughs> you don't have to go to Russia to enjoy great football. Never miss a minute. We're bringing Russia to your home. Catch all 64 matches of the 2018 FIFA World Cup Russia live on dedicated super sport channels on GoTV. In 2013, we shaped the course of national policy with compelling stories on education and health. In 2016, we provided the platform for political parties and the socially excluded to engage on issues of national concern. TV3 Mission is back with a bag. We navigate the turbulent terrain of deprived and hard to reach communities. It's one message for person access to teaching. Empowering women to they provide about. We focus our sharp lenses on the health and educational needs of the socially excluded to influence policy interventions that promote inclusiveness. And it tells you how serious. We will get you resolved. Mission Ghana, live on News 360. Mission is supported by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, DFID and the European Union. Log on to www.3news.com for more news and updates of our major stories. Join us on Facebook 3 News GH for live streaming and comments on our page. Like and follow us on Twitter at 3 News GH and at 3 Sports GH. Like our pictures on Instagram TV3 Network. If you missed our live shows, watch a playback on YouTube TV3 GH. TV3, first in news, best in entertainment. Mama, you're amazing. She is motivational. She makes you optimistic. She calms your tensions. Always there to help you, embracing you with love. She is real. She is a mother. She is selfless. Selfless mother. Mama, Welcome back. Now, labor expert Austin Gama is expressing concerns about latest reports that special assistants are taking over the roles of civil servants in various ministries. Early uh, this week, the Civil and Local Government Staff Association of Ghana warned government it will move in to clear special assistance from the ministry if governments failed to act. Speaking on New Day, Austin Gama says government must stop the practice immediately if the claims by clock sack are true. Every village you have a men's under. So the reality is that you cannot lump the entire civil service into the same basket. There may be some bad knots in between. 
and then you can complain through the structures and they may be able to resolve it or otherwise. And that's why in the Labor Act we provided, and they have also covered, they have provided that we must train, retrain, mm -hmm. and develop the skills of the people. And, and with this rapidly changing technologies, with the kind of uh, computerization system, the uh, high level SL functioning system that we have, you can use one person to generate 15 years information in, in 30 minutes. You, we need to just train them and they'll respond to it. So my plea and suggestion strongly is that if it is a fact that this thing is ongoing, we need to stop it and use sparingly these people to, to provide some sort of consultancy services as and when it is very, very necessary. Uh. But to place them in this square, if they want to react, government will become a bit frustrated. On the Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, Samuel George Nate is questioning government's claim of creating over a million jobs in 15 months, accusing uh, the Employment Minister of lying to Ghanaians. But a member of the MPP communications team, Gary Nimako, insists the Ningo Pram Pram MP had no basis for questioning the figures until he provides contrary evidence. The authority that the Minister has told an untruth and that under the planting for food and jobs, this government has employed only 3,230 people. And I'll give you evidence to, to buttress that. But before I go there, let's even take the World Population Review of 2018, which puts Ghana's working population at 12 million Ghanaians. In the State of the Nation's address 2018 by His Excellency President Akufuado, he put Ghana's unemployment rate at 5.7%. So if you take 5.7% of 12 million Ghanaians, that's 684,000 unemployed people. So if the ministers claim that they created a million jobs, it means we should have an excess of 300,000 jobs that are sitting there. So again, you see the disconnect between the figures that are being put out by both the president and the minister in terms of reality, because the president says 5.7% of Ghanaians are unemployed. Even in the minister's own speech in, in Kumasi, he made reference to the, the labor force survey of 2015. That labor force survey puts Ghana's unemployment, total unemployment rate or unemployed people at 1,250,913 people. So it then means that if you had created 1 million jobs, we've effectively wiped out unemployment in Ghana. Now, when we say that, look, it is not true, it is not factual, there is a total untruth to Ghanaians, the question I ask, have you gone to the ground to verify the vague figures to come to a different conclusion as to whether the minister has prepared or falsehood or otherwise? I don't think that if you haven't done that, it's, it's proper and fair mm -hmm. to say that the minister has prepared falsehood to Ghanaians. If you ask my brother, if he, he has gone to the ground. to the budget statement. And the budget statement, is, the budget statement is a budget of estimates. It's a budget of estimates. This was you in understand? respect of what had happened in 2017, so that would have captured the actuals. In the absence of my own very good brother, mm -hmm. Sam George, honorable, who I, I so dearly love, mm -hmm. not having gone to the ground to verify the figures, mm -hmm. I think that uh, it would be premature for him to say that the minister has paid the force rule to the Ghanaians. Let him go to the ground and come back to, to, to us next week on this show to say that he went to the ground and the people are there or they are not there. And government says it will soon finalize deals with some strategic partners to enable Ghana have a home-based air carrier. Speaking on the sidelines of the launch of Roots Africa Conference in Accra, Aviation Minister Cecilia Abinadapa explained this will connect countries and cities with Ghana as transit point. Government of Ghana in October 2017 gave policy approval for the establishment of a home-based air carrier. This is part of effort to fulfill government's vision of making the Kotoka International Airport an aviation hub. Months on, the Minister of Aviation, Cecilia Abnadapa, says progress has been made in securing a home-based air carrier for Ghana. Every successful hub, you need a home-based carrier. A home-based carrier can be a national airline, it can fly the flag, it can be owned by you or all of us together. So we need an airline that will sleep in Ghana 
wake up in Ghana and work in Ghana. And we are looking for strategic partners. It's looking very, very positive. The aviation minister was speaking at the launch of the 12 Root African Conference in Accra. The city of Accra has been selected with Ghana Airport Company Limited as host. This will be the second time in West Africa after Bamako when Mali Airport hosted 2011 Root Africa. All others have been held in North, East and Southern African countries. We've been bringing together leading airlines, airports and tourism authorities to discuss Air services to, from, and within Africa. Roots Africa recognizes the importance of enhancing intra African air connectivity to stimulate economic development across the continent. By uniting the region's key decision making institutions and stakeholders, Roots Africa provides an effective platform for decision makers to update their industry knowledge, discuss potential and existing air services and led with the industry influences. Managing Director of Ghana Airports Company Limited, John Dichem Atefwa, explained Ghana's choice as host is intended to help expand her route network, increase flight frequencies and improve on connectivity to Kotoka International Airport. Our hope is that we'll be able to bring new airlines into Ghana, develop new routes, improve on our passenger throughput so that we, our dream of becoming the hub in West Africa can be realized much earlier than anybody would have expected. 250 delegates, 40 airlines, 50 airports, 15 tourism authorities and 20 top level speakers are expected in Accra between July 16 and 18 this year for the conference. And former President John Dramani Mahama is urging government as a matter of urgency to complete the Bogatanga Boko Road, which his government started prior to the 2016 elections. He was addressing teeming supporters of the NDC in Bogatanga after their unity walk in the Upper East region. Here's a report by Tanko Mohamed Rabiu. <laughs> The reorganization of the NDC towards 2020 elections dubbed Unity Walk took place in the capital of the Upper East region, Bogatanga, with a huge turnout by party supporters, former government appointees and party executives within and outside the region. The teaming crowd trekked through the principal streets of Bogatanga with party songs to entertain the public. At a mammoth rally to climax the Unity Walk, the former president thanked regional party executives for organizing the event. The former president said most of the projects started by the NDC had been halted by the Nanado government, including the Bogatanga Boku Road, and urged the new government to complete the project. The schools we're building have come to a stop. Many of the roads we're building have come to a stop. But I have one appeal. If there is one project that we started that is critical to the economic development of the Upper East region, then it is the Bolga Boku Road. The former president said the hardship in Ghana was becoming worse under the MPP and asked them to address it. One of the reasons that they gave that people should vote us out of office was that life was hard. Today, life is even harder. And what is this government offering? I must say, if you look at what this government has done so far in the one year, three months, if that is what they call incompetence, I call it super incompetence. Other speakers spoke on the need for the NDC to come back and save Ghanaians from hardship. And the new patriotic party constituency and polling station executives at Formina in the Ashanti region have warned incumbent member of parliament Andrew Mwakoe Siyama to change his ways or refrain from contesting for the seat in the 2020 parliamentary seat. The party executives allege the MP's comments on the free SHS as always being negative, while his actions breed disunity among members of the party. Here's a report by Ibrahim Abubakar. The party executives alleged the MP's comments on the free SHS has always been negative. 
adding that his actions continue to instigate disunity among the members of the party. He's saying that the free SHS is leading to low enrollment with the private schools. Because he owns a private school, that's why he's sabotaging these policies, these policies which is going to help and has started helping majority of Ghanaians in this country. But the MP, Andrews Esiama, refuted all the allegations, describing them as baseless. Who in his right senses will say free HS is not good? Who? Even opposition members say free SHS is good. It's true, I have a school. And even that school is a private, it's a basic school, it's not even uh, SHS. Whereby one can say because SHS, uh, I have SHS, that's why I'm saying. My school I own, it's a private school and it is a basic school. Right, uh, let's do some sports now. Ghana's uh, youngest world champion, Isaac the Royal Storm Dogme, has, was crowned the Sports Personality of the Year at the 43rd Sports Writers Association Swag Awards last night at the Accra International Conference Centre. Atletico Madrid midfielder Thomas Teapati also won the Footballer of the Year Award. Nane Okuyamankwa has more. Newly crowned WBO Super Bantamweight champion Isaac Dogbe is the 2017 Sports Rights Association of Ghana Personality of the Year. The 43rd edition of the prestigious and longest running sports events in the country rewarded athletes, administrators, footballers, clubs, national teams and individuals who have excelled across all disciplines in the year 2017. Dogbe, before his crowning moment, had won the Professional Boxer of the Year ahead of Duke Micah. This year was going to be a great year for Team Dogbe. It's going to be a great year for all of us. And um, starting from the new year, January, I mean, great things just started happening. So we give glory to God, you know, and winning this, uh, winning this award as the best professional boxer of the year and then best personality of the year is, is, is an awesome feeling. Atletico Madrid and Ghana international Thomas Partey picked up the Football of the Year award. Former Accra Hearts of Old skipper Thomas Abbey was awarded for his stellar performance in the local scene last season. He left with the Local Footballer of the Year award. Priscilla Dubia of Ampemdakwa Ladies and captain of Ghana's under 20 female team picked up the Female Player of the Year award. Sector Minister Isaac Esiama promised to work with SWAG to ensure developments in sports. Indeed, sustaining a program for such a long time without a break is no an achievement. And my high recommendation goes to the past and present SWAG executives and members who have made this possible. And I wish to more exciting, more successful years ahead as we endeavor to partner the industry for sports development. Kobna Yaboa is president of the Sports Writers Association of Ghana. It was a brilliant night uh, for the sportsmen. Fortunately, we had quite a number of the sportsmen showing up. And uh, Isaac Dogwe was absolutely brilliant. Uh, he made the day for us. Uh, we did a thorough job. We have absolutely no motivation to cheat for anybody. There's no motivation for that. And one of the key reasons why SWAC has survived the last 43 years is because of the credibility and integrity of the awards. Osajifu Osiadia Yoajimambedu II, the paramount chief of the Doma traditional area and owner of Adriana Stars Football Club, and other dignitaries from the sports fraternity graced the event. And that's how we wrap up with news at 10. Thank you very much for making time. I'm Stephen Antio on behalf of the crew. Good night. There is more news at 3news.com. Have a great weekend.